Hey everyone, this week's video topic is something that I know many of us struggle with. How do we recover from sexual abuse and how long does it take? So stay tuned. So like I said, this week's video topic is sexual abuse and how do we recover from it? And I've told many of you to get this book, The Courage to Heal Workbook, because it's amazing. Uh, it, I just love this book. The verbiage, the way that she writes it. Laura Davis is a person who um, has been sexually abused herself, and that's why she's so passionate about recovery from it. And she even uses the term survivor instead of victim. And just the way that she does the way that she walks us through this workbook is just beautiful. So I would encourage you to pick it up. I have it on my Amazon widget on my website. Um, and they have it on Amazon on, I'm sure, every internet site that sells books has it. So check it out and get it because it's really great. But the first thing I want to touch on, because I hear from many of you that you've been abused in the past, and healing from sexual abuse can feel awful. And the first thing I always hear from clients and even from my followers is, how long am I going to feel like this? It's terrible. It lasts forever. I feel like I've been feeling like this forever and now I'm talking about it and it's feeling worse. And, ah. and I have a video about eating disorders and recovery and why does it feel worse before it gets better. And the same thing kind of pertains to this. We have had a trauma. We have been abused. Someone has harmed us in a way that is just horrific and terrible and I wish I could punch them all in their stupid faces and beat them up because I would and all of that hurt and all of that pain and all of that trauma that we survived takes a lot of time to heal from and we can't rush through it we can't get this workbook and oh I'm gonna rush to the end I'm gonna do all of my questions I'm gonna do all of this I'm gonna go to my group I'm gonna see my therapist and, and I'll feel better lickety split because nothing heals like time and each step in this workbook needs appropriate time. It may take us two weeks to get through the first three pages, and that's okay. It is a complete and utter process, just like any kind of recovery. It's a process, it's not perfection. We will backslide, we will act out in the way that we used to, we will make these strides where we express how we feel and we talk about it and we're moving forward with our therapist and then we'll have times where we have a really shitty day and we ha you know we cry and we act out so know that that will happen and that's normal and that when we struggle so much and we've had such a trauma we have to be patient with ourselves okay so that's just the first portion i just want you all to know that this is a process it will take time be patient with yourself, be loving, do some self-care while you're working through this, okay? Because it will get a little bit worse before it gets better because oftentimes we've been stuffing it down and we haven't been talking about it. And part of the therapy and part of the growth process is to put words to it, describe it, talk about it in detail. And I know you're all like, Katie, that sounds terrible, but it's all part of the healing process. And I promise I wouldn't recommend something or tell you something that's not true, okay? So the first portion of the Courage to Heal workbook is great. She talks about creating the um, survival skills for healing. And one of the main survival skills is creating safety. And the reason that we talk about safety so much is because as a child of sexual abuse, we didn't feel safe. There was a place or a person or a time in every day or every week or whatever where we did not feel safe and someone stole that from us, and we have to get it back. So the first thing I want you to take time on, and this is kind of your homework for this week, and maybe next week, and maybe the week after, is to think about these questions. Have I ever felt safe? This can be yes, no, maybe, I can't remember, it's okay, but have you ever felt safe? And if the answer is yes, then I want you to describe that time. What about it made you feel safe? What was included? Is it my mom and grandma were there and we were on a vacation and you know I felt very safe? You have to just let me know. Paint the picture of how it is that you know that you felt safe. 
And if you haven't, if the answer to the first question was no, I've never felt safe in my life. I still don't feel safe. I live on my own and I still wake up in screaming, you know, night terrors or whatever. Then I want you to think what would have to take place and what would have to happen in order for you to feel safe. Okay. Now I know that this is, sounds very simple, but it's very difficult and I want you to take time on it. I want you to think about it. I want you to rack your memory and think back and know if there has been a time and what was involved. Because from this, we're going to kind of create our own safety plan for working through this trauma and we need to be able to return to that safe place. Does that make sense? And I know this is really intense and I'm trying to break it down so that it's, you know, more manageable. And so I would also, the last little thing that, um, along with feeling safe is I want you um, to think about any beliefs that you may have. If you say, no, I've never felt safe, Katie, never in my entire life. I want you to write down the beliefs that you have that have kept you from feeling safe. Now, these can be beliefs and experiences like everyone I've ever trusted has hurt me. Every person that I've ever loved has let me down. Um, let's see, I can't depend on anyone. I don't know how to feel safe. I want you to take the time and kind of think about that as well because all of these pieces of the puzzle that we're going to work on, and I will do many videos on this, if you want me to keep working through this and ta touching on this topic, give this a thumbs up because I know this is a topic a lot of us struggle with and I want to make sure that I'm giving you helpful tools to use on your own time, okay? So pick up this workbook and take your time thinking about how can I feel safe? Have I felt safe before? Do I feel safe now? What needs to happen in order for me to feel safe? And then we will take it to the next chapter, which you'll have to subscribe to my channel to get because I will um, put out more videos on this topic uh, utilizing this workbook. So if you want to follow along with me, you can pick this up. Um, and we'll keep working on this as we work to recover from sexual abuse. Stay tuned.